and welcome everybody to Fan Stream Sports powered by DSP Media. This is the Fighting Irish Daily Blitz, and I'm your host, Rob Fedoff, also known as RPT. You can find me on X at P Fedoff. So we're episode 97 today. This is going to be the Tennessee State preview. Tennessee State comes to Notre Dame Stadium Saturday, September the 2nd, that is. Uh, it's on NBC and the Peacock streaming service at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But before I get to that, a couple items to uh, go over before we get into this uh, episode 97 preview of Tennessee State. Uh, Fanstream Sports has a plethora of other uh, podcasts out there and just a lot of good material out there to see. If you just go to our website at fanstreamsports.com, again, that's fanstreamsports.com. Also, why don't you download the app, whether you have an Apple phone or an Android phone. To get that app, you get additional uh, material as well. And then you can, that'll take you directly to the website and also to our Facebook group. Or if you just want to go to Facebook directly, type in Fanstream Sports, like it, and then also just share all the podcasts on there that you listen to. Uh, share it with family, friends, whoever. Get the word out. But again, just go to fanstreamsports.com. And then also download that app on either your Apple or Android phones and then follow us on Facebook as well. So some sad news to report uh, for the Notre Dame family. I heard multiple reports. It was late last week. I think it actually happened on Saturday when Notre Dame was playing Navy. Longtime uh, Notre Dame radio broadcaster Tony Roberts passed away at the age of 94. Uh, if you were a kid of the 80s like me, uh, you remember most Notre Dames were televised, but some were not. And you would listen to the radio uh, for Notre Dame. And just that voice of Tony Roberts, just a great voice. Uh, the perfect person for that job for uh, the radio broadcast. And also, let's just say if you were at a family event or you just couldn't watch the game on TV, and you were driving home with your family, put on to Notre Dame radio. And just that voice was just, it was a it was an event. Let's just put it that way. And had NBC had any sense, when they took over the home, broadca home broadcast for Notre Dame in 1991, they should have affiliated Notre or Tony Roberts some way with those broadcasts. I would have thought he would have been a great play-by-play uh, -play announcer for TV. Had NBC had some common sense, they would have used him in some way uh, for those home broad broadcasts. And then too, as I became um, out of school and into my adulthood, I remember with some friends, we would try to the best we could, whether it was a home game or an away game, to splice up the radio broadcast with the televised broadcast. Easier said than done. Usually the radio broadcast would be about two to three seconds ahead of time. But when it did work, we could just mute the TV and just listen to Tony Roberts. And mostly the last, I think before he uh, left for Notre Dame or retired, uh, it was with Alan Pinkett. And uh, we're just... Uh, uh, rest in peace, Tony Roberts. Condolences out to his family and friends. Just a, uh, a class act. He was the best play-by-play um, -play announcer that you could ask for for Notre Dame uh, radio. But here it is, Tony Roberts, the voice of Notre Dame football, on the radio for 26 years, passed away late last week at the age of 94. I believe this was on uh, Saturday, August the 26th, as we were playing Navy. And then it says here, a National Radio Hall of Fame selection and recipient of the College Football Hall of Fame Chris Shankle Award. Roberts was the play-by-play -play announcer from 1980 through 2006 for the Fighting Irish football team. While best known for, for his legendary calls of memorable Notre Dame moments, uh, he's also had a 49-year career, including coverage of the Olympics, the British Open, the National Football League, and the United States Naval Academy football team. He was a daily presence on Westwood One's America in the Morning program, anchoring their sports coverage. I can't say enough. He had great calls for the Catholics versus Convicts, Convicts game in 1988. So rest in peace, Tony Roberts. Also today, I, I found out just quick news. Uh, Blake Groupie, he was the place kicker for Notre Dame last year. But Blake Groupie made the uh, team for the New Orleans Saints as their place kicker. So congratulations, congratulations. Blake Groupie, I, he was a solid kicker. I didn't think he'd make an NFL team. So good luck to Blake Groupie. So now, as we get into the Tennessee State preview here for episode 97, uh, Coach Freeman at his press conference yesterday went over the injury report. We pretty much uh, ha went unscathed after the Navy game. However, defensive lineman Gabriel Rubio, he will be out for the next two weeks. He's part of that rotation on the defensive line. Uh, he will be out for the Tennessee State game and then the NC State game 
However, he will be back uh, against Ohio State, which is great uh, because we will need him. And it's a minor knee injury, but they're just taking some precaution. He will miss the next two weeks. So let's get into Tennessee State. This is an historic uh, game at Notre Dame Stadium in numerous ways. So let's go Tennessee State. Uh, they are coached by Eddie George. I think you know that name. Uh, Heisman Trophy winner 1995 out of Ohio State. And Coach Freeman went to Ohio State as well. Um, so I'm going to call this the Ohio State Coaches Bowl, I guess, if you want to call it that. But Eddie George, he enters in year three. Uh, Tennessee State. It's a very small school. We've never played. It's called a FCS school, but they are a smaller school. They're an HBCU school, historically black college. And Notre Dame has never played an HBCU team as well. So first time to play an HBCU school in an FCS school because Notre Dame is an FBS school. That's the bigger schools, uh, football bowl subdivision. And here's the thing too, Tennessee State, by going to Notre Dame to play Notre Dame on Saturday, they will be receiving $1 million. That's the highest amount they've ever received uh, to play any school uh, throughout their football history. So uh, congrats to Tennessee State on that. They are the, uh, they're going to get a million dollars to play Notre Dame. On paper, this is a, uh, this is a mismatch. But from what I've uh, learned through my research, they are a very athletic team. But talent wise, we should, uh, we should dominate this game. Um, so what do I want to see from this game? Uh, there's four things. Uh, the one thing right here, um, the secondary against Navy was really not tested. Navy had wide receivers wide open. It's just their quarterback could not uh, get them the ball. And as I said, uh, they're an option team. They they hardly ever throw. And even when I was watching the game, there was about two throws where they uh, underthrew uh, the intended receiver. And had that ball been on time, uh, they would have been maybe still running as we speak uh, to maybe get a touchdown or more than one field goal throughout the game. But their quarterback uh, missed on uh, numerous targets uh, throughout the game. So I want to see Notre Dame's secondary tested in this game. And I think uh, the talent level uh, for Tennessee State, it appears that their receivers obviously are going to be uh, better than Navy's because Navy runs the option. But I want to see the secondary tested. The tight ends, uh, they did not catch a pass last week at all against Navy. We really didn't need it. But the more I look back on that game, I don't even think they were thrown to last week. Uh, Sam Hartman did spread that ball out to nine different receivers, but none of them were to the tight ends. And I went back and watched the game again. I didn't even see any uh, tight end targeted for that game. So get the tight ends involved as well. Here's the big thing right here, Tobias Merriweather. I mentioned in my past podcast, episode 96, he did not catch a pass during the game uh, against Navy. He dropped a pass. Granted, he should have had a touchdown, but Sam Hartman uh, underthrew him. So get him involved, get that confidence going because he's probably our most talented receiver. Get him to have multiple catches because he has only caught one pass uh, in his entire Notre Dame career. And that was at Stanford last year and that was a touchdown pass. So get Tobias Merriweather involved to get him involved early. Um, and here's the fourth uh, item I wanna see. I know we're probably gonna see some jet lag, maybe some sluggish play early on, but I wanna see them fight through that and I want this game to be over pretty much by halftime, and it should be. Continue that relentless attitude they had. As I mentioned in episode 96, they got to be relentless every single snap like they did against Navy and throughout the year. They cannot let up. We cannot see a Stanford performance last year where they did not give a shit to be there. And it showed, and then they lost to Stanford. That was more of an embarrassing loss. I can't say enough than Marshall was last year. And then by doing, uh, by getting that game over with by halftime, I want to see the uh, the younger guys in the game. I want to see uh, Steve Angeli, the backup quarterback, get a lot of snaps. I want to see Kenny Minchie, who's the third string quarterback, the talented freshman quarterback that is, get in the game as well. He can play at least four games and still be redshirted for next year. Uh, so get get this game over with early and get those young guys in because next week uh, it's going to be a pretty big game against NC State. I keep thinking, you know, was, are we going to score fifty points, sixty points? But I think there's still going to be some a little sloppy play early on and then if once we do dominate then you get the uh, younger guys in and you know they're not i, I don't think they're going to score at will like the first and second string but i'm going to say 45 to 17 notre dame over tennessee state the first time we're playing an fcs school the first time an hbcu school has come to notre dame 
And uh, Tennessee State will be receiving $1 million to play Notre Dame at Notre Dame Stadium. They're coached by Eddie George. You've heard that name. Uh, it's going to be a Buckeye reunion with, with him and Coach Freeman. So we'll call this the, the Buckeye Bowl played at Notre Dame uh, Stadium uh, on September the 2nd, uh, this Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much it for uh, episode 97. Uh, I'll have a recap after the game. Uh, probably that Sunday or maybe that Monday to go over uh, hopefully a Notre Dame victory. But thank you so much for joining me for episode 97. And as always, go Irish.